happy November. Welcome to my mother's kitchen <laughs> and mega vlog number 11. Yay! Or is it a yay? I don't know. The year is almost over. We have less than two months left of 2016. By the way, I'm Joanna DeVoe of Kick-Ass Switch, putting the K in magic, if you didn't know that. <laughs> We've got two months, less than two months left of 2016, the year of the queen. And I have to say, it has been the year of the queen. I'm like feeling it, I'm feeling it. I probably will talk about that again next month because I'm having very already like sentimental feelings about this year and don't yell at me if you're not a supporter, but I am a Hillary Clinton supporter. I have been a fan of hers for a decade now. Uh, I read a book called A Woman in Charge. Um, it's a biography that was written, I think, I should fact check this, I believe by a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. And it is written from, I think, a very unbiased point of view about her life the whole trajectory of her life. So I read that book right when she was running against Obama eight years ago. And um, it was when I read that book that I, my fandom really kicked in. But what I was a fan of before that point and then as I was reading the book is just this very flawed woman who has been committed to the same causes, you know, forever, for three decades and has made all of these weird compromises to further those causes. And I think for me, and I, you totally do not have to agree, but for me, she very much embodies the Athena archetype, the misunderstood woman, the woman that people project a lot of fear onto, blame a lot of things on, say is very cold and unlikable, and yet at the heart is this woman who has put family, women and children, the LGBT community first and foremost in all of her policies. Um, the people, the lower middle class, poor people, I this is the Hillary that I know and that I've been cheering for. So she feels very much like a queen to me. I bought, uh, I should go grab it just to show you because it's funny, but I won't because I'm standing in my mom's kitchen and I'll have to go dig through my suitcase. But um, I bought myself and my friend Dawn like this vintage picture that had been turned into a sticker of Hillary, like back from the back from the 60s, I guess. And it says, yes, queen on it. And I just loved it. I wanted us both to have something to commemorate what's going on right now. If not our first woman president, our first woman candidate of a major party to get this far. And it's exciting to me because I, in addition to being a witch, I'm a feminist. I am a feminist witch. Two extremely polarizing, terrorizing words. <laughs> Some people really don't want to hear either, much less both together. But um, I think it has something to do with this pendant I'm wearing. I'm feeling more and more like standing in my truth and letting the chips fall where they may. If you don't like that about me, if you like my radio show, if you like my videos, but that's the thing that's gonna make you like unsubscribe or leave me some nasty mes message, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I don't want to be a politician, speaking of politicians, and I know I can be sometimes. I tend to say the right thing or things that I think people want to hear, and I really want to, something that's happened to me in the year of the queen is wanting to speak my truth as authentically as I can and to really challenge myself when I feel like I'm playing the politician because I don't need to do that in my own life, in my personal life. And I want to live the most genuine, authentic path for myself, but also so like can attract like, so I can attract the kinds of people that resonate with who I truly am deep down inside, those are the people that I wanna to talk to and befriend and inspire. So that's something that's happened and just largely 2016, the year of the queen, has been a growing up process. I think I went from a damsel in distress 
do a kind of princess in training. <laughs> and then that this year was becoming a queen. I still feel like I'm very, very much at the beginning of my journey as a queen. So I think whatever year, whatever word I choose to work with in 2017 will really be a continuation of this. It will be like, well, what kind of a queen do I want to be? Like I fully have stepped into this word. It's completely changed me working with this word. I say be very thoughtful and discerning when you choose a word to work with for an entire year because it will change you. I've been doing this for so many years now. I know this to be true. It's been true for me anyway. When you choose a word to work with, the word starts working with you. Kind of like I was saying about Saturn, when you choose to work with an archetype, the queen is an archetype in addition to being a word, but that energy starts working with you. And if you stay open to the messages and the synchronicities, it really starts to shift things around. And um, I'm gonna tell you about this, but I'm also gonna say I did not, I've done some really fun things this month. Uh, the fall festival for my son's uh, program that he's in. It's like the big fundraiser they do every year. It's the biggest one they do. I did not film that. I just wanted to be there and be present and enjoy it and enjoy my son and all of these special needs people that have special hearts. I wanted to watch them. Uh, they've been practicing dancing. Like there's a dance troupe at this program. And I do this weird thing when I see people that have Down syndrome, autism, a whole variety of mostly mental, I think, uh, disabilities are people that go to my son's program. When I see them feeling proud of themselves and putting on a performance or sharing a painting, I do this weird like laugh cry thing. Like <laughs> It's just like raw emotion and it comes out in the weirdest way. And I wanted to do the laugh cry. I wanted to feel my feelings instead of being once removed, you know, with my camera in between me and that. So I did not film that. And um, I had some fun hangouts with some friends, which is, will bring me back around to this pendant. Uh, but I wanted to explain to you why I'm in my mother's kitchen. <laughs> I am redoing the Sad to Sexy program and presenting it. I'll be talking about it this month for sure. And um, I haven't. I'm filming this the day before Halloween, so I have an idea in my head of what November's theme is going to be, but I'm going to be doing some interviews as well. So I'm not going to announce this month's theme yet. I'll have to, I don't know where I'll stick it. <laughs> I'll put it somewhere when I figure it out, but I, I don't actually, I haven't decided for sure. So I'm not for once saying in the mega vlog what November's theme is going to be because I, I'm stuck between two ideas and maybe I'll blend them together. I'm not sure. Hello, I'm driving to Costco with my awesome kid and I'm interrupting myself here because I know what the theme for November is. I just did uh, the first episode of Hippie Witch. I just did that podcast a couple of hours ago and I was talking about lifestyle design and I'm doing a couple of interviews, maybe more than a couple, hopefully more than a couple of interviews with some people I know that you love. And uh, so that's what kind of threw me on what the theme should be because I wanted to kind of, I don't know. <laughs> I know I'm gonna talk about the healing magic of food at least once. And then I'm doing these interviews and it all kind of came together for me all of a sudden. I was like, I want to talk about lifestyle design. So I will ask during those interviews, I will ask these women, so far it's just women, about the lifestyles they've designed for themselves and their customers and their fans. And, um, and then I'm just going to be talking about life, lifestyle design all month. So I'm, I'm super stoked that I have a theme because I usually have a theme before the month starts and today is November 1st and I didn't have a theme. <laughs> Sliding in at the last minute. Yay. Say, all right, Tanner, thumbs up. Yes. All right. We have Tanner approval on the theme. I'm excited about some interviews I have coming up for you guys and doing the interviews will allow me to create, continue creating the content for the healing magic of food. Trying to film in my mother's kitchen with these lights. She's in Greece right now for nine weeks uh, on a mission to help refugees. 
And so I've been coming down on the weekends, the weekends that I can, to try to film like some cooking. Um, the Healing Magic of Food is not a cooking show, but I do share uh, some recipes, basically staples. The recipes that I share are like super easy things that you can do, and I wanted to do it in a kitchen. And my kitchen is ancient and not cute, so um, her kitchen's all light and bright, and I thought that'd be perfect, but it's way harder than I thought. Oh, it is not easy <laughs> to do food, to record food. So for example, um, one of the recipes is shepherd's pie and a healthy upgraded version of shepherd's pie. And you know, that's a whole process making this. So I'm starting and stopping and starting and stopping the camera while I'm recording. And one of the segments, a long segment, this has never happened to me before. I've made over 500 videos, maybe more. I don't even know, I've never counted, but I know it's at least that. And this has never once happened. My audio and my visual are completely out of sync. So there's parts where my mouth is not moving at all. But you hear my voice, I'm talking. And I watched it back and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And the week before that, I didn't get any footage either for other reasons. So I decided I am just gonna leave that footage in because people know that I am not Giada. I am not Nigella Lawson. I don't have a film crew and cooking food live is like you can't go back and record this segment in the middle of a, rec a recipe. So um, for that little piece of that video, <laughs> I don't know what I'll do. I'll just slap some text over it. And, and hope that people are taking the program because they like me and they like the information and not because they're expecting like a Marie Forleo production, which I clearly don't do. <laughs> um, and there are just a million things that have gone wrong. I recorded one video and half the footage didn't record. And just things like that. It's been a total clown show and a major lesson. So good thing it's not a cooking program. It's, it's the why of, of healthy eating and it's very educational. I hope it's fun as well, but that's why I'm in my mom's kitchen. I only have a couple weekends left before they come back. So I'm gonna do what I can in the kitchen and then the rest I'll do at home like I did with Sad to Sexy and I'm okay with that. So I'll talk about more as November takes along and let you know like it's coming, it's coming. And um, that'll be for the new year because I just know from doing Sad to Sexy for so many years that the new year is when people really want to like change their lives and change their food and they get all pumped up about it. So it's a really good time <laughs> to put that program out and tap into that need that people have to hopefully not just, you know, have a moment with their new year resolution that peters out later, but to completely change their lifestyle because I think I make it pretty easy and painless and fun. That's what I think. You'll have to tell me <laughs> if you take the program. I have some pretty good testimonials, so um, I think other people are, are having that experience as well. And then the necklace, I hope I'm telling the story right. This is the way it went into my brain and processed, and this is the way it's coming out to you. Amber, if you're watching, you can retell the story if I'm telling it wrong, but uh, I went, I had a girl date on Friday night with my friend Amber. She is witchy, she is awesome, she's so funny. I keep telling her she should start her own something, like a podcast or a YouTube channel, because she cracks me up. She's very like, tell it like it is Amber, but it's always wrapped in humor. She just has a funny way with words. <laughs> Um, but we went out to dinner and she's like, I have something for you. And she pulled this out of her bag. It had a little black ribbon. It was hanging on a black ribbon. This is my chain here, but let me see. Do you see, can you see that? It's a pentacle. And I knew what it was because I heard her story about, she had seen an interview that I did with Lenora Henson and Lenora has a big one of these that she always wears and Amber just loved it, but she wanted a smaller one. So she went on like a wild goose chase. It wasn't, is a wild goose chase ever resolved? Hers was resolved. <laughs> she went digging around the internet to try to find a smaller one and she finally found it and she bought it and she was so excited and happy about it. So I was like, why are you giving this to me? And she said that um, 
while she gave it to me and while she was saying this, she was wearing like a a Mary pendant, I think, on like some kind of rosary situation. I'm not exactly sure, but she's like, this just feels more like me, like my kind of witchiness. And every the one that she was wearing. And she's like, it just something started happening when I put it on. It just didn't feel like me. And so the last however many times I put it on, I kept thinking, I think this is Joanna's. I think this is Joanna's. So she gave it to me. I don't own a pinnacle. I have a lot of cool witchy jewelry, but I don't have one of these. And um, I took a picture of it for Instagram and all that, because like, you gotta. You gotta do that. You gotta take a picture of it on Instagram with a little black bow on it or whatever. But then I dug out this chain and something happened when I put it on. I don't know if it has its own innate energy or if it was just the meaning of it. I felt a shift like right when I put it on. And I have continued, I've been wear I've been wearing it now, let's see, for two days. And feel different there's something I think it has to do with what I was saying in the beginning here about being more authentically who I am and stepping into my truth something about it feels like that to me and um, I'm really big into the witch's star the witch's pyramid the pentacle as a symbol it's everything you know my formula for magic that I talk about all the time the star shape the pentacle stars in a circle they're everywhere in nature if you look around if you stand like this with your legs out whoop don't do it with an umbrella right there you form a a giant you know star and so i have a lot of feelings about this but it was uh i can't explain it just touching i keep like pressing on it and touching it and feeling it and looking at it in the mirror and it just felt I think Amber was right. I think it wanted to be mine. Something about it has energized me and grounded me at the same time. And it felt like a big yes. Like, yes. Yes, this is me. This feels so good. And it's going to force me, too, to continue on that track because, like, I'm going to go hang out with my dad and his wife, who is Christian right now, <laughs> right after this. And I've already had the thought like, ooh, maybe I should put a different sweater on or should I just take it off? And then there's this voice in my head that's like, don't take it off. Don't be a liar, be who you are. Well, what if they ask me about it? What if they ask what? You know, I, those arguments. And it's like amazing to me that I can be the kick-ass witch for however many years, put myself out there so publicly, they can look me up anytime they want, they choose not to. <laughs> Um, like I've said before, we have a kind of don't ask, don't tell policy. They know what I do, but um, it's always like, la -da -da, if I say cake ass witch. But wearing this, I have a feeling, could bring up conversation. And uh, so it's a challenge, like, am I up to that? But it's interesting that I can be that out publicly and still have parts of myself that are in my closet, are in the closet, and with my family, especially the people that love me the most. So... Yeah, that's all fascinating. I have a tiny little bit of footage to show you just around my mom's house because I'm very proud that um, she's a missionary, funny enough, a Christian missionary, and here I am talking about being a witch in her kitchen. <laughs> Life is so funny. But the work that they're doing is inspiring. and They are not going over to Greece and running around the streets telling everybody they're going to hell. They are aiding the refugees there that need help, that need food, that um, everything from really big issues, like hooking them up with the medical care they need, with the food that they need, but also just really sweet human things. Um, a lot of the refugees, people don't know this, they're very highly educated. And I mean, they're lawyers and doctors that come over. A lot of times those are the refugees in certain, they've worked with refugees in Italy and Portugal and all over, it depends on where they are. In London, um, they were in South Hall working with refugees. And what really would infuriate them is the way that the refugees were treated and talk down to when come to find out they were these highly educated people with money and a lot of times they're the ones that get out because they have the connections and because they have the money but then they leave their country 
sometimes they have to leave their families behind and then sneak them over the border and it's very perilous you know waiting to see if they're gonna make it if they're gonna get caught if they're going to be you know harmed in some way but the men often will come up first and then send for their women and children their wives and their kids and it's deep so you'll have these families with these little kids that are they're treated like crap and they don't have anything they don't have any money they had to leave everything behind and so my mom and her team sometimes they'll like paint the little girls toenails you know and lip or do like have a princess day where they get to dress up like little things like that 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 really matter so there's like food there's your survival needs but then there's those needs to feel special or significant or taken care of and or just to escape your problems for a day and be a princess for a day so i'm very proud of them and so i'll show you just a little just some little knickknacks they have around their house i guess um some souvenirs from their trip but that's it for the behind the scenes footage i don't got any for yet this month and um I hope you had an awesome Samhain, Halloween, Day of the Dead, whatever you celebrate, and until we meet again, much love. Peace. Here I am at my mama's house. She is out of town for nine weeks, so I am using her kitchen to make videos for the healing magic of food because her kitchen is way nicer than mine. My kitchen is so old and so cruddy and no matter how hard you try to clean it, it never looks clean. So I'm taking advantage of my mom being out of town and using her kitchen. Woohoo! Look at pretty hardwood floors. There's not a speck of dirt anywhere. Life does not have to be perfect to be wonderful. Here I am, I have wrecked my mother's kitchen. I've got like all my little supplies here and my lights. Don't let the lighting package fool you. I am so not good at lighting. <laughs> I've had these since January and I still, if you watch my videos, you'll notice I turn orange, blue, super, super washed out weird funky shadows sometimes i look much older than i am sometimes i look much younger than i am that's when i've really figured out the lighting for the day every time it's different i am not a good lighting person but this is the kitchen that i'm going to be shooting some of the healing magic of food videos in and if you saw my kitchen which you won't i won't show it to you it's just so crazy looking <laughs> It's just so old. It got a really bad remodel, I think, in the 60s. Bad, bad, bad. And as much as I love to spend time in there, I'm not putting it online for the public to see. <laughs> but this kitchen you can look at. Uh, yeah, so here goes nothing. Let's see if I can make this work. The aftermath. Ah. This has been such a clown show, I'm telling you. <laughs> Hauling this stuff back and forth from LA to Bakersfield, to Bakersfield to LA. And I have to say, I did not get the footage I wanted, but good enough is going to have to be good enough. The healing magic of food is actually, it's the why, it's the why. So a lot of it is education, it's not so much about being a cooking show it's not a cooking show at all so I'm happy I got some cooking footage uh, but I did not the plan did not go as planned <laughs> but I, I did my best people I did my best this is a little wall from my mother's travels as a missionary they have gotten to go all over the place but Portugal most notably not most notably but they were in Portugal I think the longest and uh, they have a lot of friends all around the world now, but they've worked in Italy, in Rome, they're in Greece right now for nine weeks, they were in Portugal for a couple of years, and they've worked all over the place, but uh, those are the main places that they've spent the most time at. Working with refugees, that's mainly what they do. They help refugees. And yes, they are Christians, and every single book they own is about Jesus, and there is Jesus stuff all over their house. This is how I was raised. But 
and I don't mean but like that that's not cool that's fine for them um, but what they do as missionaries is really different than what I thought they were going to do which was go into these places and tell people that they're wrong and try to convert them to Christianity what they actually do is they just help them <laughs> they give them food and clothes they play with the kids if the kids are are bored or abused or need some help they give you know help them find the medical attention that they need and they do like bible study classes and stuff like that but i overall i've been really really impressed with what they have done and it's really opened my eyes to the awesomeness of my own mother i think it's really opened her eyes to the world to the different ways that people live and made her she's always been a kind person but made her a more compassionate person about other people's beliefs and customs and things like that so it's been a really exciting journal journey for all of us Africa rising here's a bunch of other just little things from their travels they're definitely not hoarders they're very selective in what they bring home but some of the stuff is really great they have a pretty minimalist lifestyle i would say so what i'm showing you here is all of it really uh and it, they've become minimalist from all the traveling it's kind of what they have to do uh because it's not fun packing all that stuff up every time you take off for nine weeks i am so messy this is what i've done to my mother's bed <laughs> while she's out of town uh, but I just wanted to show you since I mentioned it here is my agenda the Queen the year of the Queen my beloved Athena Queen of Swords on the cover that's actually Queen Elizabeth but I associate Athena and the Queen of Swords and then whoop <laughs> yes Queen I love this vintage picture of her I just listened recently have you heard the With Her podcast? It is a podcast tracing her campaign. And they actually aired her 1969 commencement speech for Wellesley College. And it's fascinating. She's such a baby. She's such a baby. You hear her. She sounds so different, but she sounds like herself. And it's interesting. And also, you hear her dedication to the exact same issues that she's still talking about to this day and you really get a sense of her leadership skills so if you're interested in that it's the with her podcast it's really fascinating it is the new moon tonight the new moon in scorpio i have a scorpio moon so i was very excited to pull the high priestess card i feel like this time Samhain is tomorrow it's a time for going within that looks weird Let's not put that there. <laughs> it's the time for going within, an introspective time, shadow work, all that good stuff. And I feel like I posted on Twitter something I wrote to myself in my journal when I pulled this card. And it is, your soul knows. And that's what this card means to me. Your soul knows. And this is just something funny I want to show you. My friend Marla got me a late birthday present because she was in Mexico she got me some other cool stuff too but this is the one thing that cracks me up that I thought you might like to see it's how I'm working on myself today it's a journal and it's got all these great quotes so every day has a new inspirational quote some of them are funny and let's see sometimes people let the same problem make them miserable for years when they could just say so what that's one of my favorite things to say. So what? That is an Andy Warhol quote, but the cover makes me laugh. I'm doing my best. A journal in which to prove that despite any indications to the contrary, I am constantly working on myself and trying to become the very best me, even though it's a much slower and harder process than Oprah and Deepak would have me believe. It's getting smaller and smaller. And while I would sometimes prefer just to swallow a pill or have a personality transplant, I will keep plugging away at this infernal self-improvement thing until I've done so well I can come back in my next life as a golden retriever. <laughs> so cute, so me. I am such a self-help junkie. I love it. Um, 
Let's see if we can find another good one. Like, clinging to the past is the problem. Embracing change is the solution. Perfect. Gloria Steinem. Yes. 